Uh, let's finish. There we are. Okay, well, uh, I haven't been down here for a few weeks since you saw me last. And, uh, but the last thing we did was, uh, cut this gas tank bracket I was making and have it ground. Now, on my pattern, I had all these big holes to drill in it, and, uh, I tried a hole on a, on a pattern, a piece of, you know, another piece of metal, and it was going to take too long, and it was really making my drill press, uh, it was really overloading my drill press. The Guardian Power 5-speed heavy-duty drill press. Well, well, the uh, heavy-duty drill press, it wasn't cutting it. So I had to uh, use smaller holes. So uh, I drilled the holes while it was still in two pieces. That way they'd all be symmetrical and the same. So let me see if I can get back here and look. This is that, that piece I made. I've welded together right here. Uh, drilled some one inch holes in it to kind of make it look halfway cool. And let's see if I can show you how it's going to go. It'll mount in here like this. So it'll look like that from the back. And that little uh, upraised area will be where the tank straps onto it. So. When I get it in there, I'll, I'll take another shot to show you guys. Well, another day. I, I never did get the tank mounted. Uh, and that's been several weeks back, so I've been working on other things, like around the house and such and other projects. But uh, anyway, I got my head back. So that's... Uh, that's taken six months, it seems like at the machine shop. So I'll go ahead and uh, I think I'll go ahead and put that on today. <clears throat> Alright, well uh, if, you, if you can't tell, I'm taking apart a motor and this is all for a big project we got replacing what was in my dad's red truck. Now years ago he bought this truck uh, I don't know, 20 years ago and it had a little four cylinder in it and uh, you see me do handrail. He used this truck to deliver handrail, put it in. He had a welding trailer. It's actually back in the shop over there. And uh, that's how he had to, if he had to weld something or use any kind of tool, it had a generator and he could produce power on it. But anyways, he was on doing a job and he had to go up this hill and the truck just didn't have enough power to pull it. And that led to uh, backing down the hill. He jackknifed the trailer. That's like bringing the trailer in, bending the tongue and everything just caused a ton of problems so what he decided he would do years ago was trade out that four cylinder in this truck to a V8 uh, he did that and now 20 years later we gotta replace it because this motor's pretty much shot and uh, he was helping me do it because he had to make a whole bunch of special brackets and everything he said he didn't even remember how they went so there's no point in making them so special that he said he designed it for ease but it's been nothing but trouble so far but what we got now, I'm taking off the flywheel, we got the clutch, the bell house off. We already took out the transmission. He's going to replace what was in it was a four speed. He's going to put a five speed in there, maybe get a little bit better gas mileage. Uh, and we got the same kind of motor we bought about a year ago, V8, and we're going to throw it in there. Probably take some stuff off of here, put it on there, and uh, hopefully we'll have a better car. This thing here got like six miles a gallon. So. Uh, for sure, he'll get at least twice that. At least. Alright, this is what originally came into that truck. It's a little four-cylinder. What we're using it for now is actually what Dad's been spending most of his time on, building this tea bucket car contraption. There's no real name for it because he just kind of thought of it and made it up. But uh, that's the original motor. We've uh, had the head clean and everything. The pistons are drilled out to uh, 40 thousandths. And uh, so that's going to go in here. And this will be a good little, hopefully, gas thrifty car. It'll have a five speed in here as well. 
But uh, so we got kind of two projects going on at once. Hopefully we'll get them both done and not quit on one. So. Well, I'm starting on another project. Well, I've been working on it for a while, probably about eight weeks. And uh, my old truck, you guys might have noticed it in the uh, a lot of the TV shows. It was smoking real bad and everything. So I think I had a couple broken broken uh, rings. So I pulled the old motor out, which had a four-speed on it. And I've put another one in here. Uh, I got it at the junkyard, Star City Junkyard. And uh, they said it ran real good. I'm taking a word on it. We'll find out. And I put a five-speed under it. The five-speed's an S10 five-speed. It looks like that one. So I've got it in there. And uh, I need a shorter drive shaft now. So I'd had a drive shaft cut for the original, for the 350 I put in here before, which I put that in about... 18 years ago maybe uh, if you notice that's Ranger I think it says Ford and this is 350 GM so that's something you usually don't hear a lot about somebody putting a uh, Chevrolet engine in a Ford so I did that about 18 years ago because my welding trailer there the little four cylinder in there wouldn't wouldn't pull me around so, back on track here, I, uh, I had a drive shaft made before, right here. And just in case this five speed doesn't work right, I kind of hate to cut it up to, uh, to use with this setup, because I might have to go back to the four speed. So what I've went and done was uh, buy another Ranger drive shaft and cut the ends off of it. And that's, these are the ends like that and I use my cutoff saw so now what I'm going to do is chuck this up in the lathe and turn it where that weld is turn that off so it'll be a nice true lip and I can slide it in the tube and true it up and weld it back up to shorten it now a long time ago I put a V8 in a Vega Probably about an 81, and uh, I didn't have the money to, to get a drive shaft cut. So back then, I didn't have a lathe either. So what I would do was just grind that weld. I'd take a whole, you know, a couple of hours and grind that weld down, and then I could, then it would be nice and smooth where I could shoot it in there, push it back into the tube. Anyway, I'll show you how I do this here as I go. Okay, I got it pretty close to cutting. You can see the groove there. And uh, what I'm going to do is take a chisel now and chisel it off a little bit. I wished, man, I wished I'd left the camera on. I, I just tapped it with the hammer and it slid right off. It's a little hot from the lathe. But there you go. That'll slide right in my other tube. Now, for instance, if that was my tube right there, see if I can get the new one, tap it right on in there, and weld it up. So, uh, that's how you cut your own drive shaft. Now, I'll put it on the car, right, and then I'll spin it and turn it and, and true it up. I'll just have it tacked together till then. And I've usually never, never had a problem with them. Well, still working on this drive shaft and uh, get my face in the camera. And I've got those pieces turned and, tr and trued up. And uh, what I want to do now is get my measurement of my drive shaft. Now, I've put my yoke in here and I've pulled it out three quarters to an inch. That, that way you can scoot it in and get it out back there. You know, I probably only need a half inch. But what I'll do is measure tape, tape measure from the center to that to the center of this one. 
And what that come out to be was 51 and a half. So, let's see. From the center here to my cutout was two inches. So I went ahead and did the math, minus four inches, and cut the drive shaft, the, you know, that length. Now, I looked out because this drive shaft was tapering down. So I was able to get it on those tapered areas. Okay, the next thing I did was I, I drove one of those yokes in and I leveled. I got that level. Right? I got this level. And then I got this one level and drove it in. That kept both of the, uh, the yokes at the same turn on the drive shaft. You can kind of see it here. Then I went ahead and tacked it. I leveled it this way too and tacked it. So that got that in straight. So now I had to get it straight this way. So what I did there was a... Uh, it won't be perfect. I put a piece of pipe in there. Laid my straight edge level in there and measured it and then turned it 180 degrees and measured again until I got it straight or close. It's within a sixteenth and I tacked it. Now, if this car, if this truck was going to be on the interstate a lot, I wouldn't do this because it probably isn't going to be very close to being balanced or anything. Uh, but this is just around town, so it'd be okay. And if, if it is totally messed up, I'll, I've got a pattern I could take to the drive shaft man and he can and make me one. So now all i got to do is just... Uh, Finish welding it up, put it back in the press, put the U-joints back in it, and try to bolt it up. Well, uh, here I am down to shop again. I've been working on a room, kind of remodeling a little bit, painting and stuff there at the house. So I hadn't been down here to shop a while. And uh, as you can see, the, the hot rod's right here. And that's, that's about as far as I've gotten with it. And, uh, and now I'm working on a lawnmower. You know, Kenny Four, I'm real lucky. I get him to mow the grass, right? But then he won't check the oil or nothing. Now, I bought this lawnmower maybe brand new, maybe eight, eight years ago. And I haven't really used it that much. And he's let it lock up. So, uh, Instead of going to buy another, you know, thousand dollar lawnmower, I found a motor uh, for forty bucks. The guy gave me, he let me have it for forty. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to put it on. Now, lawnmower motors are pretty easy to, to work on. You just jack them up. There's one bolt right here under that in that pulley that holds that pulley on, and then there uh, there's four bolts that hold the motor on. One here and one over here and, and two on the other side. So I've got those bolts out. I'm going to uh, unhook the gas line and the gas. Gas line here and then the throttle. And that should just lift right off. We'll find out, but it pisses me off, you know, because this, this thing should have lasted a good 25 years. You know, uh, you guys have seen that other line more I've got. The one we geared up, and I do, you know, I did the world record lawnmower jump with, and that that motor, that lawnmower is 25 years old, and it still goes. Uh, the deck went out on it, so uh, of course this one's got a good deck, but then again, I've done some reinforcement on it, if you can see here, where I've hit stumps and stuff with it. Well, it's in half inch stock there because that kept getting pushed in and hitting the blades. So I've changed that. So I've done some work on it, and I hate to just trash it. Uh, a new lawnmower is like, gosh, maybe 1200 bucks. So we'll just put this on. We'll see how it goes. You know, normally I wouldn't have to have it up on a jack like that, but I've got my shop filled up with other projects that should have only taken a weekend. My truck's been in here, gosh, for almost a year. I hate to even say it. I bought this truck brand new. It's a little Ford Ranger. 
And uh, I think I've probably told y'all before, I've got a welding trailer when I go out and do jobs. Uh, I did a job one time on a huge slope. And that little four-cylinder wouldn't get that trailer up the hill. Jackknife, and I'd take it off, and it was a big pain in the neck. So I went ahead and stuck me a 350 Chevrolet motor in there. And uh, actually, this is the third motor. I went through three of them in this thing. But it was a real sleeper. You know, I could, uh, those Mustang 5.0s, I'd pull up beside them and, and uh, could blow them away in this old work truck. So, I normally put that on the lift, but as it is now, I've got uh, to work over here in the ground and uh, try to get it done laying on my back, right? We'll take this throttle off. Might have to take it all the way off. And this gas. Now my tank's full of gas, so I don't know if this is going to run all over the place or what. We'll see. It is. I think I can cock it up here out of the way. There we go. It should lift right off. Like I said, it should. We'll see. There it is. Off it goes. Okay, there's the motor off. Uh, I tell you what's going to be the hard part. When I put that other motor in, I'm going to leave that pulley in there because those belts are kind of hard to get off of it. But I've got it's got a, a keyway in it. And that keyway is going to be a really pain in the neck. To, uh, to get the line up with this shaft on this one. Well, I got the, uh, the motor on there, and the pulley went on pretty easy. Uh, there it is. I still got to put the bolts in. But I want to show you this pulley. It's got a keyway in it. Now, the one that come off my motor didn't have a keyway. It had a built-in notch to go in the keyway on the shaft of the motor. So that was a little bit different. Uh, when you do trades like this, usually you're going to find a lot of things different. And uh, so far everything going pretty good. Now the original motor was a 12 and a half horsepower and this is 12. But it ought to run okay. So uh, I'm going to put the rest of those bolts in. And we'll see how that goes. They're way up in there hard to get to. So, uh, they're kind of neat because they've got a point on them that makes it kind of line up. And what we'll do is get all of them started before we get going. Now this motor doesn't look like it had threads in it. So we'll... Ah, shoot. Ooh. I think I can get it easier. That's the hard part. Lost the bolt. Lost the bolt with freight. Well, this isn't really typical, but kind of is. Uh, sometimes you get something used and start messing around with it, and it looks like it's it's uh, this intake has been rigged or something, right? And not rigged, but somebody stripped the bolt out. So I've got to uh, put it, run a tap through there. And if a tap doesn't work, I'll. I got a little insert I can put in there. When I used to race go karts, uh, the motors would strip out. And a lot of times, when you got a motor for go karts, you go ahead and drill them and and put those little. I can't remember what they're called though. A little steel inserts in so the threads don't strip anyway. So that's what I'll do now.
Well, I've been working on this thing about two hours, and I went outside to mow, you know, mow the grass down the shop, and and got it, most of it mowed, but about halfway through, this thing just started pouring white. <laughs> Well, Dad called me over, come mow the grass down at the shop, and uh, he said he just got the mower. We had to fix this mower, fixed it. He said it was running great. Told me to come down here and mow it, but come down here and check it out. And motor is locked up, and uh, it ain't it ain't going nowhere. So luckily, we went and talked to the guy who gave us this motor. He gave us a new motor. We're gonna. <laughs> he said that one ran. <laughs> the plan is to put that one on this one. The old mower is still mower motor is sitting right over here still. Hasn't been moved. We're just gonna have a pile of nominal motors. I'm really doubting this one's gonna do any better than these. So the cool thing is though, each time we've done it, we started out with a I think it was like an eleven horsepower or something, and we've gone up each time. Bigger motors every time. We'll see how this one goes. We didn't film much of it at all. But anyways, we got the motor in there, and the exhaust seems to be on the totally other side. What was on it was just a pipe coming straight out. Cool thing was, we put it on there, we had to throw the carburetor on from the other motor, and it started right up. Well, it took us 15 minutes to realize it was out of gas, but... <laughs> it started right up after that and uh, so now our next problem since it was just a pipe coming off is the exhaust it was loud couldn't even hear somebody right next to you so we gotta rig some other exhaust and this is it custom Hicks creation of an exhaust and it's just gonna mount and come straight down just like that and it barely clears this but it, it'll be better than it being loud enough where you couldn't hear anybody yelling at you. So. Alright, well, whoever, I don't know, Dad or whoever was mowing with this thing, they must have tore it all to pieces and make us have to do a whole motor change and then broke the light out. And then even this little uh, pull, pull through bolt was like completely off and into the wheel and holds the deck up. So whoever was mowing must have been dragging this deck or hit a tree stump or something and must have been pushing it in the ground, I guess. I don't know how it was broke. So you think that light's gonna work? Yeah, looks good as new. Some inch and a half conduit. What we're gonna do is the plan is to make a kayak rack for the Honda. Now, why you might be asking we're making a kayak? Well, it all comes down to this great story that for some odd once blue moon thinking, dad went out and decided he needed a kayak and uh, somehow convinced a bunch of guys at his work to get kayaks too. He has these dreams of going on river adventures like Huckleberry Finn or something with a kayak. He didn't. He doesn't even have a raft. It's just kayaking down the river and he's gonna go around the country on a kayak or something. I don't know what he's thinking. So he's got these guys at his work who's a lot younger and they've already got new families and everything trying to get them to go out on these kayaking adventures with him. And uh, so now what we got here is a couple pieces of conduit. We got a trailer hitch made. We're just gonna make a t-bar to put these kayaks on it's gonna that's that's the plan kayaks it's gonna turn over okay we're rolling here and uh right here's the river 
Sure, turn over. See, Dave's going to ride his kayak. Where you backed up too far? Scoot on in. He's going to ride it right in the water. It's pretty steep right here, man. I don't know about this. There you go. You're almost there, man. This is supposed to be a dangerous hit stuff, not a nut. You got it made, dude. Let's go. Ah. Go, 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 go. Maybe you better hold it. No, run out of film. No, you need that. There you go. Ah! <laughs> Dude, I got a kayak full of water. You did good. <laughs>